Hello Gators, we're going to be working with the Intermediate Value Theorem. This is such an important theorem that I have it a triple star. You need to memorize the theorem. You need to also be able to use the theorem much like we did in geometry, meeting the conditions of the theorem in order for you to uh, uh, reach the conclusion. Here's what the Intermediate Value Theorem talks about. When we have two points connected by a continuous slot curve, and that there's a line between the low point and the high point, then there must be at least one place where the curve is going to cross the line. And wherever it crosses the line, that x point is also going to between, be between the two other two points. And so that's the idea, that it must cross that line. Intermediate means in between, and so we're talking about in between two others. Let's take a look at it more specifically and talk about the, um, the conditions of the theorem. One, f of x is continuous on the closed interval. So we're talking about uh, from an a to b, and we're going to talk about these two y values. There's going to be an intermediate value, I'm going to call it k, it's going to be somewhere in between these two y values. And what the intermediate value theorem says is the x that goes with that k, the x that goes with that k must be between the a and the b uh, on the interval. So let's go ahead and uh, finish the uh, theorem statement. Then there is a value c such that f of c equals k, so this intermediate value, and not only is that equal to the k value, that c is going to be in the interval between a and b. Now what are the consequences of the intermediate value theorem? Let's talk about that. Here's a curve right here, instead of going from uh, a low y to a high y, I'm going from a high y to a low y. You can do it either way. So if f of x is continuous on a to b, and if f of b is negative right here, and f of a is positive, then zero definitely is an intermediate value. And that intermediate value, let's go ahead and finish, then there is a value c such that f of c will equal zero and c will be found between in the interval from a to b in the closed interval from a to b and so another word for this is a root so when we have this going on a negative value and a positive y value and we have a continuous curve then we know that there's going to be a root or a zero within that interval. Let's go ahead and look at the intermediate one more time, nice and clean, and look at the, uh, let's go ahead and look at the conditions. Here's the picture. If f is continuous on the closed interval and k is any y value between f of a and f of b, here's our k between, that's the intermediate uh, idea, then there's at least one x value, this x value here, between a and b such that f of c is equal to k. Let's go ahead and uh, work with a table and uh, see if we can uh, apply the intermediate value theorem. Below is a value of continuous uh, function. This is important, otherwise let's not even bother using the intermediate value theorem. Okay, on this interval from 0 to 9, what are the minimum number of zeros? Okay, so uh, what I did is I put a plus for this y value, a negative for this y value. So I know it's going from positive value to a negative value. So I know it has to have a root in between. A negative value to a positive value. So I know it needs another root. Then it goes up to a higher y value. Then it goes down and it's gonna cross and have a, uh, a root again. So this is gonna be three zeros because zero is an intermediate value between zero and negative five, between negative five and zero, and seven and negative one. Over the interval between four and nine, what are the fewest possible uh, times that f of x is equal to one? Well, I know that uh, from four to nine, we're going three, and then I don't know what happens between, but I know eventually I get to seven. 
and from 7 I'm going to go all the way down to negative 1 and I will go through this intermediate value of 1 when I'm going from 0 to negative 1. So at least one view is possible. On the interval from 0 to 4, must there be a value for x for which f of x is equal to 2? Okay, now it's more like a, a when it says explain, it, there's more like a little proof here that we need to address and uh, let's go ahead and do that. First you must address that f of x is continuous and that's given, not a problem, on the interval from 0 to 4 and we know that the number 2 is between f of 0 because f of 0 is the number 1 and f of 4 and f of 4 is the number 3 so between uh, 1 and 3 we do know we have this interval value 2 and then we say by the intermediate value of method conditions there is a value C such that F of C equals 2 and uh, C is in within the closed interval 0 to 4. This is the way I'd like to see you explaining. Okay, let's go ahead and look at on the interval from 4 to 8 could there be a value of x such that negative such that f of x is equal to negative 2 so we do know that f of x is continuous on uh, the interval from 4 to 8 now uh, let's take a look at f of 4 f of 4 is the number 3 and f of 8 is the number 7 and clearly negative 2 is not an intermediate value. Okay, so the intermediate value theorem does not apply. Okay, so there is no guarantee. Okay, it might happen, and that's what this word here. Could it happen? Well, it could. We don't know for sure, uh, but there is no guarantee. Now, this kind of question doesn't show up in the AP, more like uh, number three will show up. All right, will the function ever equal eight in the, inter in the interval? Okay, so again, uh, the first step is to meet the conditions. And uh, the first thing is f of x is a polynomial. which is continuous. We know about that. Okay, let's uh, check out f of negative 1, and f of negative 1 is the number 3. Let's check out f of 5. f of, f of 5 is 25 minus 5 plus 1, which is uh, 21. And certainly uh, 8 is going to be between f of negative 1 and f of 5. So we've met the conditions of the intermediate value theorem. So we can say by the intermediate value theorem there exists C such that f of C equals uh, 8 and this C is going to be between and in, in the interval from negative 1 to 5. So the theorem is an existence theorem. It doesn't tell you how to find this C. It just says it's there. Okay, let's do it again. I really want you to be able to get down how to show me how to validate using intermediate value theorem. Okay, so meet the conditions. F of x is uh, a polynomial and continuous. Uh, f of 0 is equal to 0, f of 5 is 25 minus 5, which is 20. And we know the number 12 is between uh, f of 0 and f of 20. Okay, so we've met the conditions of the intermediate value theorem. So by the intermediate value theorem, 
there exists C such that F of C equals 12 and C is between are in the interval between uh, 0 and 5. Now, so we uh, Garrett, we found, we uh, have determined that the intermediate value does apply here. The next question is find that C value. So uh, we know that um, um, we're looking for the Y value is going to be 12. So we know 12 is equal to some c squared minus c. So we're uh, putting c into our function and we know that it's going to equal 12. So the 0 is equal to c squared minus c minus 12. And now this is an Algebra 1 problem. c minus 4, uh, c plus 3. So our c's are 4 and negative 3. Now we want to only have a c that's between 0 and 5. So we don't want the negative 3, and we have found our C, which is the number 4. Does the intermediate value guarantee a C value? Find that C value. Okay, so we, we do have a problem here. This is a rational expression, and um, we know this is not continuous. Uh, and it's not continuous at x is equal to 2. Now is that important? Absolutely important because we are looking at the interval from 0 to 3. So it's not continuous um, in the interval from 0 to 3. Uh, therefore, the intermediate value theorem does not apply. So can we guarantee? No, we're not going to be able to use this intermediate value theorem. All right, suppose that on my first day of college, I weigh 175 pounds, but that by the end of the freshman year, I weigh 190. According to the intermediate value theorem, which of the following weights did I absolutely, positively, 100% without a doubt, attain at some point my freshman year? Okay, so 168, nope, not a guarantee. 178, 178 is intermediate between 175 and 190, that could have happened. 188, that is an intermediate value between 175 and 190, that could have happened. 198, that is not an intermediate value. So the intermediate value theorem can guarantee these two weights, but not any others. And that's the end of the screencast.